Happy birthday! Mike, bring the microphone closer! Oh, this is getting rather awkward. Right, Mike. Happy birthday! Thank you. And once again, Mike has a problem with winds. Oh, of course. Oh, there's a... Yeah. Well, there's a whole a huge complicated thing with me because of everything that's been going on. Now I can see why... Uh, who, was, who was the leader of the Green Party? Um, Meridia 2 Day? I can see why 2 Way probably cheated. Yeah. Considering how frustrating wins can be. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and this was back in 1993. Which probably would be even more frustrating back then. Yeah. Well, yeah. But a, a, but a lot's happened. You've turned a year older. I have officially done two decades on this earth. And how does it feel? I'm having a slight ex existential crisis. <laughs> because I just realised I've just done two decades on earth and I have no bloody idea what I've done. Really? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Apparently I've done a lot. Apparently I've achieved a lot for a person of such tender years. But, but I still feel weird. And the worst part is it's going to carry on getting worse. Really? Yeah, for every decade yeah? carrying on, it's going to get slowly and slowly worse. Unless I became like the UN Director General. No, but even then you'll still have an existential crisis about how you didn't have kids. You're always going to have an existential crisis about something. I'm still going to... I'm always going to regret something, right? Yeah. Well, it's not really regret. Yeah? Because regret is implied that you made a mistake. Yeah? But you didn't make a mistake. You just chose a different path. It's like... You just feel as if you have some wasted potential, right? And you feel as if life didn't quite go the way it want, you wanted it to. And it's... No, no. Well, not necessarily that. It's, yeah? It's because... It's because there is a unreal expectation that yeah. we have to do everything. Oh, uh, yes, especially for us women. Yes, well, for, for us women, we do have the, we do have the uh, expectation that we have to do everything. Have a successful career, have kids, have a husband. Yes. Usually it's husband. Usually it's husband. Yeah. Um, do this, do that, provide for the family, have no time for oneself, and yet still... Be fabulously youthful, have a beautiful style. Apparently. Yeah, it's impossible. It is impossible. Yeah. So it's it's purely fine that you have an existential crisis and you're just going to have more and more. And considering that I pretty much have them almost weekly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I used to have existential crises so often I stopped having them. This is my first proper existential crisis for a few years now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And do you think that you have achieved a lot from the first one to this one? Well, from the last one to this one? Watch last one? From my 19th? Yeah, no, no, from the last existential crisis. No. No? <laughs> the problem with me is that a lot of the things I'm currently doing right now is very long term. They will take decades to finish. Yes. But by the time I finish them, um, everyone's to say I've done a fabulous job of living life. Okay. It's just right at this moment I'm in the middle of a process and that's why I feel as if I haven't achieved anything much even though people keep on saying I have actually achieved a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. This is weird. Okay. I mean, I there is no justification for me feeling this and yet I feel them. Why do you think that there shouldn't be a justification for it? That's a good question, you know. Should there be any justifications for feelings? No, 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 no. More justification for being in a process. Hmm. A, a, a process that you believe that there is an ending to, yet there is a still a crisis because you're not, you that the process hasn't ended. See? Hmm. On her birthday, where she always talks all the time, I left her speechless. <laughs> <laughs> It's always, you know, there's always going to be something amazing going on, but, oh well. Yes, there, there is always going to be someone worse off than you, and there's always going to be someone better off than you. Then what's it like being the person in which everyone is worse off than you? <laughs> are, are you talking about me right now? 
No. No way. I'm talking about the apex of the apex. As you said, there's always going to be people who are worse off than you. Yes. What if there isn't? What if you are the person everyone is worse off to? <laughs> the, the best way I can describe it is that, be, that there is different variables. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. Different, uh, different attributes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. We'll go with that. There's always going to be someone who has a lower attribute than you. Are, this, are we talking about an RPG here? I was getting along those lines. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're zero strength. Yeah. Th- there is al- there is always going to be someone with a lower agility than you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> but saying that, um, should we give them a recap of what's happened over the last few weeks? Because Sophie is now not only the editor, but also the producer of the podcast. Oh, man. <laughs> Mike's been blind for the last three weeks. <laughs> so I've been editing the podcast. Yes. Since then. And, um, yeah, you might have noticed some stylistic differences. Very much so. Because I, I, I do <laughs> not know how to use Audacity as well as Mike does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yeah, don't worry. I, I have noticed those differences. Yeah. The, 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 those... So, so those sorts of things that I would kind of even out. Yeah. You've just stopped it. Yeah. Like the last two podcasts. Oh, actually the last four, technically. Yes. There was about a 50 minute one and then there was a 20 minute one. Yeah. But for me, I would like even them out. No. Um, well, my podcasts were between 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, well, except for uh, not this one, but the one beforehand. That was a 52 yeah, but that's because it was an election special. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, 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 what, have you learned anything from the creative processes that it is now with editing and producing? No, I didn't really learn much. <laughs> I just, um, but Audacity is easy to use, so long as you have eyesight. <laughs> yes, yes. And for Mike, it must have been a hell of a thing to use. Yeah, I just, I just take my time. Yeah. That, that's all I did. And um, just for um, update, um, I went through... Okay, well, 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 we have to talk about what this happened since the last podcast. Mike's been in for eye surgery. <laughs> well, 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 I was going to get to that, but mm. um, I went to the ophthalmology last Tuesday, and they says, oh, we need to do surgery on you. Turns out... <laughs> Your cataract might be eye-threatening. <laughs> well, well, I didn't even know I had a cataract. The cataract had occurred over the last two months. Yeah. So they, cause, so they took it out. They took, they did a full corneal transplant. I actually have the notes somewhere. It's up on the tape. Um, and sixteen stitches. And apparently the. The operated eye now sees better than the non-operated eye. Correct. Which means that the corneal transplant was, by all means, a huge success. Yes. Yes, there's, there's still a few things that need to be done. I know there's still three stitches that have to be put in on Thursday. This will be last Thursday when the podcast comes out. Yeah. Um, and then probably have to do some more visits other than that. Um, it's just going to be a big, long recovery. Yeah, and you know the eye in which Mike can see better now and he can't really use that because apparently it's painful. Oh, yeah, because it's like, the best way I can compare it is it's like you are you have stapled two pieces of paper together and you're trying to move it. Yeah. That's the best way I can describe it. it does that make sense to you in a way? Yes. Good. Um, yeah, but in saying that, this is the Sophie special, and I would like to know, get to know Sophie just a little more. Leo more. So Mike's the one planning this podcast? Yes. So I have no idea what's happening. Now, now, now I have to ask the question, because we were talking about this last night. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you know how we develop from eggs into, into human beings? Yeah. How did you come across Guretama... That's a very good question. <laughs> yes. And I, I seem to know a lot of things I shouldn't know a lot, or know anything about. Yes. I can't quite remember how I counted the goodie Tama, but I think... Tumblr. That's it. Okay, Tumblr. I have a few anime... I follow a few people who really like anime, 
So if you like anime, you probably also like Goody Tama too. Now, or at least heard have heard of it. Now, the the reason why I know Goody Tama mm-hmm. is that the po- uh, the podcast that I watch that Sophie doesn't like, which is Dynamic Banter. No, I wasn't too keen on that. No, I wasn't too keen. They did an entire episode on Goody Tama. They did an entire episode. Oh yeah. They read off the Wikipedia article. <laughs> That's all they did. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. And I think Goody Tama is Mike's. Oh, by the way, Vox also did this really cool video about Goody Tama, which can give you more information about it. Um, but well, from what I've heard, Goody Tama is Mike's spirit animal. Pretty much. So you have this depressed egg. Yes, it it, it is translated into unfertilized egg. Yeah. In Japanese, um, Goody Tama came second in the Hello Kitty animated food competition. Um, what came first? It was, um, what was it called? Oh, damn it. Um, mochi-chan? Which is? Mochi, like the sweet little ice cream balls. Yes. Can you imagine being <laughs> such a crap winner that people just forget about you and go to the runner-up? Yep. Hey, American Idol does it all the time. Oh, yeah, that's what happened with Susan Ball, right? Well, well, well that was America's Got Talent. Uh, that was no, Britain's Got Talent. Britain's Got Talent. Oh, no, X Factor. X, no, X Factor. That's what happened with X Factor. I mean, key, did you, when did Susan Ball win? Which year? Oh, it was years ago now. Whatever happened, can you still remember who won instead of Susan Boyle? And yet we can still remember Susan Boyle? Yes, because it's... It, well, because... It, the, the association with the f- and the prizes associated with the first prize winner yeah um usually don't get them as famous oh uh, yeah and it's not as raw no we as being a vile sensation there's not, nothing can quite beat that yeah or even coming very close to that person yes they got a lot so well September 5th right yeah 19 no yeah wait 1997 yeah where? Where Gonzo. was where was Lil Sophie born? Gonzo. In a hospital where Mum was working. In fact, um, I was almost not born actually because a few months prior, uh, Mum almost had a miscarriage. Oh wow! Well. Yeah. So if she had a whole lot of bleeding, right, with me in it, and it, and it's and um, luckily at the time, Mum was working at hospital in the hospital, and she was having a meeting, and suddenly she had this huge um blood. What do you call it? Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. A huge blood thingy. A huge blood thingy, like a huge bleed out, and she and she basically freaked out. So did everyone, and she was immediately carted to the ICU, and there, and she was basically staying there for months on end, because she couldn't really move much while um, while she was trying to keep me in inside her, basically. Yeah. But I eventually came to term. Yeah. Yeah. It was all cool in the end. Apparently, I was the biggest baby. And mum was the smallest woman. <laughs> so the proportions were... Screwed up. Yeah. Um, and you came here when you were... Almost five years old. Almost five. Yeah. I think it was August 2001. August 2001. August. I remember seeing calendar saying August 2001. So you would have been just past four. No, just before four. The funny thing is, apparently we came on hot... My family came on holiday here before we permanently moved in, so maybe, maybe they'll string the holidays. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And then, yeah, we came over when I was almost five. Yeah. Because um, next thing I knew, we were in this apartment at Combin Road. No, near Combin Road. I'd love to meet Mira first. Yeah. We were in a, we were in a flat near Combin Road, and um, before I knew it, I was... I had to I had to go to bed early because I had to go to school. Yeah. Because I was like a first day of school over at Ramiro Primary. Then we moved over to the flat at Combin Road when I was like a little bit older. Then moved to Green Lane, moved to Epsom. Yeah. Yeah. So you've technically moved you moved more times than I did during my childhood. But it was a smaller area of movement though. Yeah, it was a smaller area of movement. Like, I moved 350 kilometres. Yeah, whereas I only moved, like, from one suburb to another. Yeah. 
I've actually heard of funny stories of uh, where people are like, yeah, we're moving house. We're moving two streets down. Yeah. And so moving house was very hilarious because they'll just basically pack all their things into wheelbarrows and wheel them down there. Because was it when I was at Waikato and my yeah. parents bought the house that they're in now? Yeah. Um, it was about two hundred meters. Yeah. Um, if it was direct, it's like seventy. Seventy meters. Yeah. Like if you pinpoint it from the house. Oh, to the from house. where the crow flies. Yes. And and it's funny when Dad goes to sleep, the same light, the same street light that pissed him off at the old house. Yeah. Pissed him off at the new house. <laughs> It's the same exact street light. Get, and I just laugh at it. Get the blind. Yeah. Get some blinds if you're if you're that angry. Yeah, I, I, but you know, it was like at that halfway gap in the blinds. Yeah. It'll just like pierce through. Get some curtains then. Back up. No, curtains. yeah, but, but there was a halfway thing and then the curtains. It doesn't matter if it was blind or curtains. Is that halfway gap? Really? Yeah, it was just like pierced through that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'll show you. In descriptive later. Um, when did you go to St. Cuthbert's? 20... 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. No, I'm, I'm, gla- I'm class of 2015, so... Probably started in 2010. No, 20, 2009. 2009. 2009, year 9, yeah. Okay, okay, so you started year 9 there. I started year nine yet, yeah. Does that does that maths make sense? Yeah, the maths 2015, makes sense. 2014, 2013, 2012, 2011. No, I started in 2011. 2011? I'll show you. 2015, 2014, 2013, 2012, 2011. I did, I did five years at St. Cuthbert's. Yeah. So I started in 2011. Okay. Yeah. So it was just like when you moved, you just funny enough went straight into St. Cuthbert's, right? No, no, no. You, you apply to go to St. Cuthbert's first. Oh, uh, yeah. Because that's like a two-year process. I remember my parents talking about sending me to St. Cuthbert's for secondary school when I was in primary school. And like in year six, they were starting, they were, they were talking about it. And they started the process in year seven. Man. You know what, you know what I was doing in year six? What? I was doing, I was going to high school for math and then have to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Like we, we were doing similar things, like we were we were going into onto higher education. Yeah. Hey, how did that work? Going, you going to secondary school and during your primary school years? It suffered my English, very much so. Pardon? Because uh, like I I because math. How, math how did that work? Well, I was going to a Catholic school. Yeah. Um, and the high school was about one hundred fifty meters down the road. Yeah. So at the start of the day. Apparently in the year seven and year eight call, uh, year eight class they yeah. did maths first. Yes. So I, I was at school during during uh, primary school. Yeah. During the start of the day, at the immediate start. Yeah. And then I would just walk off. It's like I'm going to school. I'm going to do maths now. Bye. Yeah. Walk across, do the maths, and then come back and do maths again. Why? I don't know. It was the because like at the primary school they did English first then maths, but at the other school at the high school they did maths first then English. There was no correlation, so like my English suffered. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you do it? You went to Catholic school, so how do you do the cross? Up, down. Up, down. Left, right. Up, down, left, right. Yeah. Then the half prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and concerned that's when I used to go to church three times a week. Holy moly. Yeah. I mean, my school was... St. Catholic's was Presbyterian, right? Yeah. But you only need to go to chapel once a term. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We lived in that small of a town that the church was like 100 metres away. Oh, man. Yeah, so it was just like Bible class and then Friday Mass. So why? So what stops you from being religious? Because really, you grew up in obviously quite a re- religious community. No, no. It's just that um, th- th- there comes a time where you realise yeah. that Catholicism never actually gets you anywhere. No, it, it, it doesn't help you either physically or emotionally. And that's why Martin Luther got pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's a really old joke, isn't it? 
It's a really, re- it is a, it is a real old joke. Yeah. <laughs> so in saying that, hey, you do look like Martin Luther a bit. A little bit. Yes, yeah, so you just need to dye here, put a, put a cap on, and a cassock. Yes, I've dyed my hair more times than I realised. Yeah. But it's okay. Um. I- I- any tips for your free flowing locks? <laughs> explain the hair to me. Well, you have to explain the hair because. Podcast listeners might not know what my hair is like. Um, <laughs> if I can give the analogy mm. to Sophie's hair, yeah, she will be heterosexual for the next three lifetimes. Right. That's how straight her hair is. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, it is that black. Yeah. Um. I may as well be, but, <laughs> hey, have you heard of the fan fiction Light and Wartle? Yes, I have. That's right. Apparently, I've got the hair of that protagonist. Yeah. As, yeah, I've got Mary Sue hair. Mary Sue hair. Yes. It's very long, very straight, very dark, uh, uh, raven, like raven darkness, way dark. Yes. <laughs> and it goes up to my, it goes past my hips. Yes. Yeah. Apparently it's quite thick as well, and the hairdressers absolutely love to play with my hair. So, any tips for uh, long, luscious hair? Have a grandma who had good hair. Okay. Apparently I got my hair from my grandma, my maternal grandma. Yeah. Um, just wash it once a week. Shampoo, condition, get good shampoo, get good, good conditioner. Uh, brush it once a day. Yeah. Have... Actually, in that regard, having oily hair is very beneficial because the oils in the hair does help keep it conditioned naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't stand, don't sit around heaters too much. Yeah. The heat and cold can snap hairs a bit. Um, don't pull on it. Don't pull on it. No, don't. L- l- like a like a slow cooked pulled pulled. <laughs> don't yeah, don't do that. No, yeah, don't, no. Don't, don't do that. Don't cut it. Don't cut it. Evidently, yeah. Um, cut all ties with a hairdresser. <laughs> cut all ties with a hairdresser, okay. Well, no, no, don't. You know, just go back to them when you need to have your hair styled, but evidently don't get it ever cut again. Yeah. I haven't had my hair cuts for ages now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What else? Be Asian. Be Asian, okay. Be Asian. Now, yeah. now we, we, we have two little friends with us today. Yeah. In, in the podcast. Yeah. Now, 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 I know that we have a Vaporeon, which is the new edition, mm-hmm. and we nicknamed it Tesla. Yeah. Funny enough. <laughs> but we also have Her Majesty. Yeah. Francis John Hedgehog. His Majesty. His Majesty. Can you tell us the story of Francis John Hedgehog? Esquire. Esquire. <laughs> okay. I was given this. I was given this as a gift for my eighteenth birthday from one of my school friends. Uh, she's still on Facebook, and I still talk her from time to time. Anyway, so it's basically a stuffed hedgehog that, which I haven't found any one like Francis. I've been yeah. asking about it, and they said there's such thing as stuffed hedgehogs. Ta da! Yeah. So, but anyway, um, so by that time I was quite chummy with the physics department over at St. Cuthbert's because I just wanted went to, to a huge school trip with them over over around Europe for two weeks and uh, basically then when I looked at the hedgehog I realized that it looks like one of my physics teachers yeah um, his name is Francis Bryden shout out I think he's still working at St. Cuthbert's please do not stalk him um, but anyway, I decided to name the stuffed hedgehog after him because it looks because the hedgehog looks like him without his glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you have any other? Oh yes, and also I announced his name in front of him and his wife, <laughs> who is who's a chemistry teacher. That's the part that I crack up every yeah. time. Yeah. Be- because who tells the teacher that? Yeah. So basically, I showed them the stuffed animal, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bryden, and I told them that's named after Mr. Bryden. Um, but Mr. Bryden wasn't amused, but Mrs. Bryden was cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> She's just laughing her head off. Yeah. Uh, and do you have any other precious stuffed animals? Well, there's Jared the Moose. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
as well as uh, Shahazrad Arabia Camel, <laughs> the pink camel. The pink camel. Yeah. You've seen her, right? Yes, I have. Yeah. Now, uh, well, <laughs> well, we have to talk about the day, the infamous day that we met. Yeah. How did we meet, Sophie? Mahi introduced us, right? Yes, that's right. And you were in the uh, student hub for what? I was actually in there asking for uh, um, financial assistance. You're still doing it now? I'm still doing it now. <laughs> um, yeah, and Mohi was there because I knew him from the Māori Student Association. I knew him because we were doing law together. Yes. And one thing led to another and... Now we're friends. Now we're friends. We're bros. We're bros. We're bros. Bros, not hoes. <laughs> bros before hoes, right? Yeah. Bros before hoes. Bros before <laughs> hoes. Oh, I watched I watched Toy, Toy Story last night. Okay, and well, finally. You might. I thought you might like to know because you absolutely love it. I love that movie. As much as I like Sherlock, so it's like. What I know about Sherlock, he knows yeah. about Toy Story. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was completely surprised by the pre credits. Like, you have Josh Whedon, and you have Steve Jobs. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like, they did that? Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the, yeah. As well as um, Dan Pickles, in which is which is Dad's dad's mum's favourite comedian. Yes, also known as Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. Um, the, the, the part that always got me with Sophie is that she, she tried... To outwit me on a on a Toy Story joke, yeah, and I completely outwitted her back, yeah, because she didn't know the context, yeah, it, because it was it was the start of Toy Story when they have the have the union meeting. Mm-hmm. I can't believe <laughs> toys have union meetings. Yeah, and um, Mr. Potato Head scrambles out each other's. His facial features. His facial features. And he says, look, I'm Picasso. And Ham says, I don't get it. And he said, and you called me an uncultured swine. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. And then I went back at her and says, what are you looking at, you hockey puck? And <laughs> she had no idea what I was talking about. And then I got it. Yeah, and then you got night. it. Yeah. And I was just like, H- how does it feel to, to get something... That is way beyond what we what you were thinking previously. That was great, honestly. Yeah. Now, do you like falling with style? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Oh, thanks, Sophie. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Oh, that wasn't flying. <laughs> that was flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, and it culminates. To, uh, yeah, most people. You, and then it culminates in, into what most people would agree would be the most fantastic Disney Pixar scene ever. Was that was that pre Disney Pixar or post Disney Pixar? Well, yeah, it's because it, that was when Steve Jobs was still alive yeah, and still helming the thing. Yeah, it was. It was pre Disney. Yeah, that was when Pix. That was pre Disney Pixar. Yeah, and when they when they when um there was this really great scene towards the end when. You know, the falling of a star line was used again, but in the greatest of ways. <laughs> so, um, have you watched lots of Pixar, Pixar films afterwards? I've pretty much seen every Pixar movie, even post-Disney. Cars 2? Cars 3? Yeah, uh, well, well, Cars 3's coming out. Uh, okay, apparently Cars 2 wasn't all that nice. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't all that great. But, but I loved Inside Out. Yeah, Inside Out was great. The Good Dinosaur? I'm sort of mixed on that. Good Dinosaur, if any other studio made it, we'll say it's a good film, but it wasn't up to Pixar standards. Yeah. But honestly, though, to be fair, they, to be fair though, they, they released two films at, during, in the same year. One was absolutely award, Academy Award win, winning mer, worthy, and the other one was like, ah, we decided to do a bit of a procrastinating side project. Yeah. But you know, what, you know what's so great about the, um, the Good Dinosaur? What was that? Well, if there, if there was one good thing about it, it was the anime. It was the animation quality. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, honestly, the opening scene with water is like, can I drink that? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, the, the, how, the, how they absolutely how they animated water was like mind-boggling. Yeah, yeah. 
And and considering that, w- w- what are we doing after this, Sophie? After this podcast? We're going. To, we're going to the art gallery. Yes. Yeah. And and then. We're going to dinner. At where? I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm not telling you, you little <laughs> minx. I mean, I've I've been keeping this dinner thing a secret, and I've been rehearsing all the different ways Mike could have asked that question. Yes. That was scenario number five. <laughs> well, 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 well you, you cannot complain about me trying. I know that. And I expected you to try, which is why I've been rehearsing it in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah, and considering that um, what's been going on over the last week, I'm like, oh, man. This is like the only thing you can really look forward to. No, no, because like, the rest of the time I've just been so tired. Yeah, well, except when you're in hospital, you had slaves looking after you. You had slaves, Mike. You had your nurses at beck and call. Yeah, I know. Push a button. And I, and I don't usually want to dis- want to disturb them. Yeah. All the time, like the rest of the people do. Yeah. And just like, just like, do the eye drops every two hours and that'll be it. I'll be vegetating here. Yeah. Just give me some tea at two, at two o'clock. Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, yeah, just give me, yeah. It's like, you'd have to come to me. Not me asking you to come to me. Nice. That's the way I do things, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. But the funny thing is, um, back going back to the restaurant, um, finding clothes for you has been a hell of a job. It, it, it has been a job. It has been a job. Yeah. So, we, so um, Mike, has, Mike has a lot of clothes that no longer fits him. Correct. Yeah. So what have we been, do- what have we been doing? It's basically throwing clothes in and out. Trying to find things that can fit, that's a clean and that's a presentable. Yes. Yeah. And because of that, I am going to have a very long shower tonight. Why? Because of all of the dust and stuff that has been thrown around the place. At is, me. That what, is, that what, is that what my nose is stuffy? Yes. Dusty? Yes. Mm. Yes. I cannot stand dust. So why do you keep a lot of dust in your wardrobe then? Well, I keep it contained. Really? Yes, I keep it contained. Until someone frivolously throws all the dust here, there and everywhere. Oh, man. Because dust is essentially old skin cells. I know, right? It's 90% old skin cells. Yes. You're just living in yourself. Yes. And I'm having allergic reaction to you. That's not surprising. <laughs> And yeah, you're having an allergic reaction too. No, I'm asking what the time is. You can see the time, can you? Two thirty-six. No, I can't see. Oh the yeah, time. you're blind. Should we end it there? No, we could talk for ten more minutes, shall we? No, because I have to put my eye drops in. All oh, right, sorry about this, Mike. This has been the as yet undecided with a birthday host. A birthday host and a one that needs medical assistance now. Yeah, right at <laughs> this moment, if he doesn't like get his eye drops, he shall be blind. Uh, you can contact us on the Manus, T H E M A R N U S for Mike. Yes. And it's also for 9709, apart from Instagram. Yes. And if you want to contact the podcast itself, we're at AYU Podcast or as the other side of podcast at gmail.com. In the meantime, please help me through this existential crisis. Don't ask me anything about Star Trek transporter problems or. <laughs> Or any sort of transporter problems? Please don't ask why I'm, I, we can only ever see the perspective of life only through one person. And to cut it goes some. That's going to confuse me for a few weeks. Yeah. So yeah, have a nice day, guys. May you feel fulfilled. Yes. Even though May was a few months ago. <laughs>